Hi, my name is Carmen, and I am an early childhood special education teacher, a life and ADHD coach, and I'm the host of this podcast, Authentically ADHD. I created this podcast to help anyone wondering if they have ADHD, people who have been diagnosed for a while and want some more support and community. I'm here to bring you the latest research on ADHD and neurodiversities while we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of ADHD. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, my friend, and welcome back to the podcast. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I've had a busy week. And since I've been going through a lot of deep topics, I wanted to kind of go back to some of the basics with, you know, any new research that I have gathered and with a new perspective. So today we're talking about ADHD and understanding it. This episode is for those with ADHD and for people who love or care about someone who has ADHD. Are you ready? Let's get started. So the first thing I want to touch on is the term ADD. It's outdated. Okay. ADHD is the name of the neurodevelopmental disorder because the hyperactivity in each person shows up differently. It could be internalized or show up as a socially acceptable behavior due to masking. The next thing I want to say before I dive deep into this topic is that ADHD has a terrible name. Attention deficit disorder is not a deficit in anything, really. It should be called like self-regulation disorder because we have plenty of attention. We just have a really hard time regulating where we want to put our attention, where we direct our attention, and where we want our attention to stay. Plus a ton of other things like mood, emotions, motivation, organization, and so on. Regulating those things is hard. The most difficult thing people seem to think is that ADHD isn't that serious because anyone can have a hard time being organized, forget things, or run late. But ADHD means that these things debilitate you, that your quality of life is affected by these symptoms negatively. Why? Why is this? Because along a spectrum, our brains develop differently and slower than neurotypical brains. And I get this question a lot, and it sounds like, what is ADHD? What exactly is it? What does it feel like? And to answer this question, I need to go into a little bit of science talk to explain it. ADHD is not something we develop. It is not something that goes away. It's a neurodevelopmental disorder, meaning our brains have been different from birth and it develops differently as we age. Okay. In the latest research, it states that 4-5% to of adults are diagnosed with ADHD. It also refers to the fact that there are growing numbers in the diagnosis of adults, but that it's still behind. Boys also tend to present with ADHD in a much different way than girls, so the ratio is still that more boys are diagnosed with ADHD than girls at earlier ages. And this is because ADHD is a spectrum disorder, meaning all people who have ADHD present differently. Most people think of the stereotype of the hyper little boy who is disruptive, he can't sit still, he has a hard time following directions, etc, etc. But this is only one presentation of ADHD. Here's where the science comes in. ADHD brains are affected by an underdeveloped prefrontal cortex, a smaller cerebellum, and an amygdala that likes to take over when our prefrontal cortex can't. This all leads to a dysregulated nervous system. 
The biggest impact of this is the prefrontal cortex and what is held in that part of the brain. Basically, the prefrontal cortex holds our executive functions. The functions that, you know, help a person to basically be an adult, be a responsible, productive adult in the world. Now, the executive functions are presented in many ways, but these functions, such as emotional regulation, inhibition, self-motivation, working memory, both verbal and nonverbal, organization, planning and time management, problem solving and self-regulation, these are the things that we struggle with. Think about how much all of these symptoms affect our lives. So in the ADHD brain, we lack the ability to imagine a finished product and the steps to get there. We lack the skill of delaying short-term pleasure in exchange for long-term reward. We lack self-motivation to get started on a task because of the chemical imbalances in our brains. We feel emotions quickly, and we act without thinking first due to that impulsivity. We get distracted because our verbal working memory is not great at keeping us on task and focused. We live in disorganization, and we always feel behind because we cannot feel the passing of time, and our brains make it very difficult for us to prioritize. All of our tasks feel like they're the most important, that they need to be done now. And since we lack that self-awareness, meaning we cannot look to our past to inform our future, or we will just continue to keep making the same mistakes. We are dysregulated by nature, meaning our body takes in and presents information so much different than a typically developing brain. This can look like bouncing off the walls and hyperactivity, but it can also look like changing the way you're sitting a ton, playing with your hair, biting your nails, and anything in the category that is more of an internalized hyperactivity. So that even could be thoughts that won't stop, intrusive thoughts that won't stop coming in, thoughts swirling around our brain, and things like that. This is one of the major issues in the misdiagnosis and late diagnosis of adults with ADHD. These symptoms can present like anxiety and depression and or mood changes. We are more irritable. We have dysregulated nervous systems. And after some time at home, at school, in friendships and relationships, as we grow up, being told we aren't listening, that we are too dramatic, disorganized, etc., of course it's going to create anxiety and sadness because we grow up not feeling like we are good enough, especially when we go undiagnosed. But even when you're diagnosed, you still hear the same messages. Now, a neurotypical brain develops in a linear way. Their brains develop self-talk naturally. They develop inhibition and they are able to feel time passing within their brain while having the ability to prioritize their tasks. The chemicals in a neurotypical brain allow them to self-motivate and imagine or visualize the finished product and the steps to get there. They naturally prioritize and only forget important items a few times a week instead of a few times a day. This is because neurotypical brains develop fully functioning prefrontal cortex by the age of 26. In an ADHD brain, it does not develop fully, really, ever. We are deficient in that area for the rest of our lives. We can improve skills by practice and using intentionality, but naturally, our brains are different. Even each ADHD brain is different. There are a lot of symptoms that each person struggles with at all different levels. Some of us struggle with distraction more than impulsivity. 
and some people are able to improve their negative impacts of ADHD with minimal treatment, while some need intensive therapies, medications, and so on. I really don't like these terms, but I I really couldn't find anything better than that there are high-functioning ADHDers and lower-functioning ADHDers. Within this whole spectrum, there are also three different ways that ADHD can present, okay? And it falls into three different presentation types. The first one is hyperactive and impulsive. The second one is inattentive. And the third one is combined. To give you an idea of each type, I'm pretty much reading straight from research on Chad's national research site, but then I'm going to give some relatable examples of each one, okay? So let's start with the inattentive type. Inattentive ADHD often looks like failing to give close attention to details, making careless mistakes, having difficulty sustaining attention, does not appear to listen, struggles to follow directions and instructions, has difficulty with organization, avoids or dislikes tasks requiring sustained mental effort, loses things easily, is easily distracted, and forgetful in daily activities. For the next one, for hyperactive impulsive type, it often looks like fidgeting with hands and feet or squirming in your chair. We have difficulty remaining seated. Um, It can look like running about or climbing excessively. And in adults, it can look like extreme restlessness. It can look like difficulty in engaging in tasks quietly and being able to relax. It looks like you are driven by a motor. Adults will often feel inside as if they are driven by a motor, that they cannot rest, that they are always rushing. It also looks like talking excessively, blurting out and interrupting, difficulty waiting, and taking our turn and interrupts or intrudes upon other people. Now, the combined type is basically you meet criteria for both the inattentive type and hyperactivity, hyperactivity, okay, hyperactive impulsive presentations. So you probably have symptoms from each um, of those. So you, for a combined type, you are hyperactive impulsive, you have some of those symptoms, and you have inattentive symptoms. Now, to receive diagnosis, these symptoms need to start before age 12 and be present in more than one setting and interf- interfere with um, functioning at home, at school, or work in social settings and cannot be better explained by another disorder fully, okay? These are the ways that people look when they have ADHD. And all these presentations can appear in males and females. And these presentations can change as we get older. Boys can be inattentive and girls can be hyperactive. And I need you to remember that the DSM-5, the criteria for ADHD, is still created for children. If we're going to improve the ADHD knowledge, we need to stop living in the stereotype, the terrible stereotype that ADHD is a kid disorder, because it looks different in adults. Why, why is this? Why does it look different in adults? Why don't you see an adult bouncing off the walls, blurting out answers, and requiring more time to concentrate on tasks? Well, remember when I referenced all that feedback we get as kids and throughout life? Well, 
we combat and try to accommodate this by masking our symptoms. So we as neurodivergent people try to appear neurotypical. So the child who stares out the window turns into someone who can look like they're paying attention while they're actually just lost in their thoughts and they are not focused on what's going on. The child who can't sit still may now seem anxious because she is playing with her hair. The child who forgets her homework a ton or talks nonstop now looks at others to know what to do, when, and what's appropriate and acceptable. So this is, this is a huge reason why we are misdiagnosed with things like bipolar disorder, anxiety, depression, and so on. Doctors tend to treat the symptoms instead of searching for the root cause of all the symptoms that we have. ADHD affects every single part of our lives, our jobs, our relationships, our quality of living, and our relationships with ourselves. We get so used to masking as adults with ADHD that we may appear to have it all together, but behind the scenes, we are usually barely holding it together. We forget birthdays and appointments. We start projects that we never finish. We run late and we have doom piles of papers, clothing, and closets full of secrets because being and living as an ADHD adult is sometimes embarrassing and we want to appear as neurotypical even though we are not. This is one of the this is all of these things are the biggest issues within the ADHD community, the community of doctors who still need to do more research on what adult ADHD looks like. Because for the ADHD adult, we don't necessarily look like we're easily distracted. It looks like we are losing our, our thought. You know, we can't keep thoughts in our brains. We may interrupt people and that affects our friendships. We have difficulty waiting for things. We want things now, 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 now. And our emotional regulation, it's, it's so hard to regulate that we can seem very moody, very irritable, and we can seem dramatic to those around us. When people say, you know, everybody has a little ADHD, everybody gets distracted, everybody loses things, everybody avoids, you know, tasks they dislike. But when these things affect your quality of life, that's when it turns into ADHD, okay? That's when it's ADHD. On the surface, it can look so different because each person on along this spectrum, we all present differently, okay? Each person with ADHD, you may meet one person with ADHD, that means you only met one person with ADHD, okay? <clears throat> ADHD is a compound disorder and it leaves wakes of um, disorganization, lost friends, and burnt bridges. Now, we don't mean anything by these things. We don't mean to burn these bridges. We don't mean to interrupt and, and, and not be able to concentrate, okay? We have executive functions that impact our ability to live life as a productive adult. Our working memory, the mind's voice and the mind's eye, they don't work like a neurotypical brains does. We are not able to distinguish now versus not now. Our brains are, as Dr. Russell Barkley lovingly calls it, we, are, we have Ferrari engines with bicycle brakes that impulse control the ability to stop and think before doing is non-existent we have to practice those things self-talk is developed in a neurotypical brain naturally 
in an ADHD brain, we have to develop that and teach that to ourselves. Think about all the things that go into organization, planning, and problem solving. This batch of little skills is so, so debilitating to people with ADHD. We can't prioritize and sequence what happens first and what is not important. We have our tasks all feeling like they're on the same level of importance, that they are all important and they all need to be done now. We have issues with self-motivation and this is a brain chemical issue, the get up and go to start a task. This is helped usually by medication and other treatments. We have terrible emotional regulation. Most ADHDers grow up not knowing how to name emotions or regulate them. And we are really terrible at self-evaluation and self-reflection because we don't have a lot of self-awareness. When we gain that type of self-awareness, we can work on these skills, but it takes a lot more effort than it does for the neurotypical. When you see an ADHD -er working hard, I just, I want you to remember if you're a neurotypical, that they are probably working five times harder than you are, and they might only be getting half the things done. So I really hope whether you are an ADHD -er learning about ADHD, or you love somebody or care about somebody who has ADHD, that this episode helped you understand why it's so difficult for people in society to really recognize that adult ADHD and to accept it because that's what this podcast is all about, digging into that new research and learning more about our ADHD. That's all I have for this week, my friends. Stay authentic and we will talk soon.